Hey, welcome back to our study called Counter Culture. I'm Pastor Stephen, and last week we introduced the book of Daniel, and I'm excited as uh, we look at the life of Daniel and where his faith takes him and, and as he trusts God and pursues the path that God has laid out for him. Um, last week, we discussed that just because something is accepted in culture as right doesn't mean that it is, um, and that if our culture challenges our faith, we challenge back to the culture. We challenge culture. Um, Daniel and his, his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, they found themselves taken from their homes and, and found themselves strangers in a strange land, in a brand new place, uh, taken from their family, uh, their life, their homes, everything that they knew, and that their very culture, the very uh, essence of who they were, their integrity, um, their faith in God, was all tested, and they were challenged. But Daniel and his friends rose to that challenge, and they put God first, and they found themselves uh, coming out the other end stronger in their faith. Um, today we're going to see King Nebuchadnezzar has a dream. And if we look in chapter 2, and that's where we're going to be, it says in verse 1, One night during the second year of the reign, Nebuchadnezzar, he had such a disturbing dreams that he couldn't sleep. Uh, have you ever had some just crazy wild dreams that just you woke up in the morning thinking, what kind of dream? What, what was that all about? Um, and it just made no sense. It was just nonsense. King Nebuchadnezzar woke up the next morning, and he had these disturbing dreams that he could not shake. And so what he did is he, he, um, he, he was so consumed with this dream that he brought in all of his sorcerers, his magicians, his enchanters, and astrologers, it says in verse 2. He called them all in and demanded that they tell him his dream. And as they stood before the king, he's, they said, or he said, I have a, had a dream that dream, deeply troubles me, and I must know what it means. Um, then uh, all the astrologers answered the king and said, Long live the king. Tell us the dream, and we will tell you what it means. So King Nebuchadnezzar in verse uh, 5 says this. He said to them, I am serious about this. If you don't tell me what my dream was and what it means, you will be torn limb from limb and your houses will be turned into heaps of rubble. But if you tell me what I dreamed and what the dream means, I will give you many wonderful gifts and honors. Just tell me what my dream is and what it means. He didn't want them to just tell them what they thought it meant. He wanted them to be able to tell him exactly what his dream was and what it meant. See, uh, culture, and this is the first point I want to bring out, the culture creates a cost. In our culture, if we align ourselves with what they say and what they are doing, then it is going to create a cost, and it's going to cost us something. Uh, he warned them that all their houses would also be burned to the ground if they did not interpret the dream. But if, if they did, he would give them gifts and honors. He was desperate. Culture is the same way, giving unreal expectations and demanding results. And as we walk in this culture that we live in, if we do not live up to their expectations, then it creates um, a cost in our life that we have this danger of changing who we are and changing ourselves to fit into culture. And it costs our very selves. It costs us our identity. It costs us our integrity. It costs us our very lives. Culture demands that you give and give, demanding perfection, but unwilling to admit that no one can measure up to this kind of standard. We continue to read uh, verse 7. They say, please, your majesty, tell us the dream and we'll tell you what it means. The king says, I know what you're doing. You're stalling for time because you know I'm very serious when I say if you don't tell me, you are doomed. So you've conspired to tell me lies, hoping I will change my mind. But tell me the truth, and then I will know that you can tell me what it means. The astrologers re replied in verse 10. This is, l listen to what they said here. It says, I know uh, no one on earth, is what they says, these astrologers, these wisest men, the counselors to the king said, no one on earth can tell the king this dream. Uh, and no king, however great and powerful, has ever asked such a thing of any magician, enchanter, or astrologer. 
The king's demand is impossible. No one except the gods can tell you your dream, and they do not live here among the people. And that's my next point. And this is, this is where we're going to go with this, and this is what I want you to understand. If culture creates a cost, the cost of culture cannot compete with Christ. And I'm going to say that again. The cost of culture cannot compete with Christ. The astrologers and the magicians replied to Nebuchadnezzar by saying, no one except the gods can tell you this dream. And they were absolutely correct. This is very fitting because the cost of culture, it cannot compare with Christ and the power of Christ. When Daniel heard about the dream um, and the demand, he asked for time and then went straight to his friends and said he urged them to ask the God of heaven to show them his mercy by telling them the secret so they would not be executed along with the other men of Babylon. Um, Verse 12 says that the king was furious when he heard this and he ordered that all the wise men of Babylon be executed. And this is when they said, no one can tell you except the gods. In verse 13, he says, because of the king's decree, men were sent to find and kill Daniel and his friends. Because we saw in chapter 1, they became trusted advisors to the king. So when Daniel heard this, as we just, we just said, that he, he asked for time and he went to his friends and he says, we've got to pray about this. We've got to ask God to reveal this so that we can be spared. And then the wise men also can be spared as well. Um, we see this in verse 17. And so they went home and Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, uh, and Daniel, they all prayed to God. And then verse 19, it says, the night... Uh, that night the secret was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven. When the cost of culture seems great, our response needs to be hitting our knees before the God of all creation, praying to God, seeking God first, seeking his face. God answered Daniel and his friends by revealing the dream and what it meant to Daniel. Daniel then told the king what God had revealed and he begins to talk about this statue and how different parts from the head all the way down to the feet meant different things. And they were all different. There was a head of gold and bronze and, and silver and all the way down to uh, iron and clay and then or clay and then iron mixed with clay. And, and all of these different parts of the statue, and I'm going to encourage you to read that. It's verses 24 through 20, 45. I don't have enough time to go through this in detail. But all of them represent different kingdoms that were coming. Part of the the Babylonian kingdom was going to fall. And then we see the Persian kingdom came in and it's going to fall. Then we see the Roman Empire at the time of Jesus was going to fall, come and fall. And then finally we see this giant um, star come crashing into the statue and, and destroying the whole statue. And this represents Christ as Christ comes in the book of Revelation and he establishes his new kingdom. And this, this, this dream was about the future. Powerful kingdoms, just like King Nebuchadnezzar's, were going to come and go and finally we see Jesus come and restore his kingdom. No matter who is in charge, what culture we face, God is still in control. Christ will always be greater than the culture we live in. King Nebuchadnezzar threw himself down at the feet of Daniel and acknowledged the power of Daniel's God. Look at verse 46. Then King Nebuchadnezzar threw himself down before Daniel and worshipped him and commanded his people to offer sacrifice and burnt sweet uh, incense before him. The king said to Daniel, Truly your God is the greatest of gods, the Lord over kings, a revealer of mysteries, for you have been able to reveal this secret. And he then promoted Daniel second only to the king, and Daniel appointed his three friends to his court as well. We see that in verses 48 and 49. And as we understand this idea or this concept that the cost of culture cannot compare with or compete with Christ, that, that Jesus will always rise above any culture. He will always rise above any issue, anything, any challenge we face. So when culture creates a cost, if culture is demanding something from you that you cannot give, then you turn to God, you turn to Jesus. And when Daniel and his friends turned to God, God worked things out for their benefit, on their behalf. It wasn't the power of Daniel. It wasn't the power uh, of his three friends. It wasn't anything that Daniel had said or done. It was all God. It was all Christ working in Daniel's life to show and reveal himself so that King Nebuchadnezzar would understand that God is truly the God of all. 
and, and all creation, that he is the king of kings and lord of lords. And that's what he says here. He says, truly, your God is the greatest of all gods. And he recognized God as the one true God. And, and that is the story of what we need to live our lives in the current culture we, we are in. If when there is a cost, if when there is a challenge, when culture kind of causes friction between in your life, if we turn to God and other people see God in our lives, then we can give God glory by how we live our lives, by ultimately obeying the word of Christ. And that is where we need to be in culture, is obeying God at any cost. And we're going to see chapter 3 next week as Daniel's three friends are challenged again with their very lives by standing when everybody else falls into submission, by standing in their faith in God as we you probably know the story of, of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. And I'm looking forward to sharing that with you next week as we dive deeper into Daniel's story. I hope and pray that God speaks to you and you become stronger in your faith and ready to stand firm in your convictions and integrity in Christ. And we'll see you next week as we, uh, we talk about courage that can overcome culture. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys.